Hey there YouTube, it's Jimmy with To The Top Crane. And today we are going to talk about this little reel on the side of the boom. Um, also I forgot my cameras today so I'm doing this with my cell phone so hopefully this turns out okay. But I've gotten the question a few times on uh, what are the reels on the side of the boom. So this is on our 100 ton. I'll spin over here. That's the side of the 200 or the ATF 180. So that reel right there is essentially the same one I'm going to be working on on our 100 ton. And then this reel on the front of the 200 or on the end of the boom it's actually on the stationary section of boom so it doesn't telescope out but that reel is a hydraulic hose reel so you can see the hydraulic hoses they come down the side of the boom over here and they're actually plumbed into the system it's a, the ATF 180 has a hydraulic luffing jib and I'll uh, show you that in just a second actually I'll show you that right now before I get into this other deal Okay, so I'm I'm standing on top of the boom over here on the 200, and I'll pan down this jib. And you can see there's a hydraulic cylinder right here. And clear out to the tip. So um, this jib's 43.3 feet long, um, the way it sits. However, it can be split right here at 17 I think 17.8 feet and there's a stack of shivs there so you can actually run multiple parts of line off of this 17.8 foot piece and then this other piece is 25.5 and then over there we have inserts and stuff that we can put in so we can split this jib right here with this joint and put 80 feet of inserts between there, making this jib 123 feet long. But, the hydraulic portion of it. So like I said, right here is our cylinder. And then down here there's some pivot points. And we hook the hydraulic hoses up to the cylinder. And uh, by extending the cylinder, it changes the angle of the jib or lefts it so what it does is if the jib is like this it starts doing this on the end of the boom so straight out is zero degrees maximum jib angle on this crane is 40 degrees 40 degree offset on the charts it gives you 0 20 40 for your load charts you can essentially put it um, anywhere between 0 and 40 and the computer compensates for it so it is kind of infinitely adjustable between 0 and 40 but whenever we're planning a pick we run off of uh, 0 20 and 40 because the load chart does change depending on uh, the angle of the jib or the offset of the jib so that's what a hydraulic luffing jib is if this wasn't if this hydraulic cylinder wasn't in here there would be a link like a steel link that has various pin holes in it and you would pin it either at 0, 20 or 40 degree offset so it would be physically pinned there it wouldn't be adjustable but with the hydraulic luffer it is infinitely adjustable between 0 and 40 degrees offset hope that makes sense to everybody but I want to cover that real quick. We just had that video up, or just put that video up uh, a little over a week ago. Actually, it's going on two weeks now of installing the jib. I thought you guys might want a closer, closer look at it. So there it is, the hydraulic luffing jib for the ATF 180G-5. All 43 feet of it. 43.3 actually okay now uh, 
now we're back up here on our 100 ton, the deck of the 100 ton. Or this is the ATF 80 4. You can see it does indeed have a PAT system on it, and I got that question uh, quite a while back. And the box on the 200 looks like a PAT box, but it's been configured to work with the Sedano system. But what we've got going on is this reel has lost a little bit of tension. And you can see this cable pulls off of it. And it's lost a little bit of tension. So when he's retracting, um, this cable starts getting some slack in it. So we're going to retension it and then readjust the boom length. But what this does, it's uh, multi purpose, multi functions. One, there's a series of conductors inside this cable, and I'll show you in here. And that transfers the signal for the anti two block out on the tip transfers uh, data information for an anemometer lights on the end of the boom um, and then also like an aviation strobe if you had an aviation strobe on the end of the boom for working around airports that that's handled all through this cable the other thing this cable does is as the boom is telescoping or extending or retracting it measures the length of the boom so it tells the computer how much stick has ran out so if I turn around here, you can see this cable. It's actually attached to section number five, the tip of section number five. Number five is the smallest section. That's the outermost or the endmost section. So as the sections go get, get telescoped out, this cable pulls this drum and I'll show you inside what it does. Okay, so this, this is the inside of that box. If you look on the end here, each one of these wires is one of the individual conductors inside this cable. So that cable terminates up here on the end of this spindle. And this spindle actually has slip ring around it. And hopefully it's zooming in on there. There you can see the slip rings. And then these little followers that ride on the slip ring. So what happens is as that comes out, that spindle is allowed to turn. Those followers ride on the slip rings and it transfers the information through these conductors over and into all of this magic. So that's where the computer information, or where the data goes and the computer deciphers it and whatnot. But as that's extending out, you can see those gears are turning. So in the center of this big gear right here, there's a screw and that's the fine tune adjustment screw or the, just the adjustment screw. Um, that's connected to a potentiometer. So as a, and a potentiometer is a variable resistor. Just think of like a rotary dimmer switch in your living room or dining room. Um, as you turn that, let me back up. Voltage is sent into the variable resistor and X amount of voltage comes out of the variable resistor or the potentiometer. So as you turn that, the resistance in that circuit on that resistor changes. The computer deciphers that change and turns it into a length measurement. So it reads the voltage change or the change in resistance in that circuit to determine what length the boom's at. Now, the way we're going to tension this, and I'm not going to be able to show you guys because I'm holding my phone. If I would have brought my camera, I'd be able to. So that's my bad. But what we do is we just pull out a little bit of cable. And then we will throw a couple extra wraps around the drum. And it effectively puts the drum a little further out, which increases the tension. And it, inside this housing, it's just got a spring like a tape measure. It's just very large, a lot bigger scale. So we don't want to take that housing apart and try to mess with the spring inside there. It'll blow up, or it can blow up if you're not careful. 
So we'll just throw a couple extra wraps around it. But after we do that, it's simply going to have this drum rotated out two or three or four more turns. So the boom length is not going to be reading correctly anymore. It's going to think that it's out whatever distance it is around. So after we adjust or after we add more tension to it, we're going to have to adjust the screw and uh, turn it back until the computer reads the correct boom length, which on this crane fully stowed, I think is 35.76 feet. So I'm going to tension it real quick. We'll start the crane up and see what it's showing for boom length. And if it's off, we will start adjusting this little screw right here until we, well, it's going to be off. So we'll adjust this little screw right here until we get it uh, reading back where it's supposed to be reading at zero boom extension. Okay, so I just I added three wraps. Well, essentially I pulled the drum three rotations forward and then wrapped the rope or the cable back around it. Now we're inside, we're gonna start this crane up. We're gonna see what our boom length's showing. Okay, it's upset because it's it's two blocks basically. We've got to, not quite two blocks, but we got the drum or the block pulled up towards the tip of the boom uh, because he was traveling down the road. But you can see right here it's reading 47.5 feet of boom length. And that should actually be 35.7. So I'm going to go out and adjust that screw and we'll see what we end up with. There we're at uh, 43. 39.3. Thirty-five point six, so I need to go out just a little bit. And it's imperative that that is right where it needs to be because the computer uses that to determine where to lock everything. Thirty six point two, so I actually went just a little too far. Thirty five point nine, we're close. back to 35.6 again. That thing's extremely sensitive on its tenths. You have tenths of a foot. Alright, 35.7. Okay, now I'm gonna, I took a, took a picture of the page in the book that shows the correct length. I'm gonna double check that, I'll be right back on. All right, 35.7 is indeed where it's supposed to be. 
So I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to pull out on the cable and make it think that it's telescoping boom out. And then I'm going to let it come all the way back in make sure it comes back to 35.7. This is typically easier to do with two people. It's a lot less climbing back and forth. But by doing this, we're telling the computer that the boom's extending, at least it thinks it is. Now we're gonna let it come back. And we're gonna make sure that it reads 35.7 again. All right, 35.7. So, that's done. It's just a matter of uh, putting the cover back on it, and that part of it's fixed. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention in here, this little guy right here. I don't read German, but I read English. And right there, do not open filled with oil so if you're into one of these pat boxes don't take that cover off this is the boom angle indicator so there's a pendulum inside here and it's filled with mineral oil so that pendulum doesn't sit there and bounce back and forth it will make it travel in a smooth uh, sweeping arc um, if you take this cover off you're going to lose all that oil out of it and the only way to refill that to my knowledge is you have to take the whole reel off the side of the boom, lay it upright, or you can take this out, lay it upright, and refill it. And even then, I'm not sure you can uh, get it filled correctly. So if you crack open one of these boxes, leave this alone. <laughs>